Hi, I'm Rahul Basu from the Goenzi Mati movement. I'm going to talk today about uh, what we're actually proposing to uh, should be implemented in Goa for mining in the future. This is uh, really taken mostly from our Goenzi Mati manifesto. It's available online in multiple languages. Please do read the original. Uh, we cannot guarantee that this is fully in sync with it. Look, before we get into the manifesto, let me just recap a few things. Firstly, quickly our five principles. We own the minerals together. It's an inheritance. We have to pass it on. When we mine, we must ensure zero loss. Everything we get from mining, we must save for our children and future generations. And any income, we must share equally with everybody as owners. Five basic principles. The Supreme Court uh, judgment was that uh, there should be an interim cap on mining of 20 million tons. 10% uh, of the sale value of iron ore would be a fresh levy on iron these funds would be deposited in a permanent fund for future generations. All mining for the five-year period from 2007 to 2012, pretty much when the Congress was in charge, all of that was illegal. Rupees 65,000 crores was conservatively the amount recoverable. And since all mining leases were uh, had expired, uh, it was very clear that we had a clean slate and could redesign our mining system. Now, just a little bit of a background as to how important mining is for the state of Goa. And there's a lot of confusion on this matter. So let's quote a few statistics and numbers so that you know, we really get a sense of it. Goa's population is about 14 and a half lakh people, 1,450,000 1, people. Of this, about uh, 1.1 million are voters, about 600,000 people are of the employable age or working age population. Goa's unemployment has historically been in the range of about 1 lakh, it's one of the highest in the country, uh, about 100,000 people. Now when the mining ban took place, the Goa government said that uh, out of the 600,000 people in the working age population on the million and a half total population, the Goa government said 100,000 people were directly employed in mining and 300,000 people were directly or indirectly beneficial beneficiaries of mining. Big numbers. 300,000 people is 20% of the population of Goa. But what is the reality? Let's look at a few figures, official numbers. In the Rajya Sabha, it's been reported that uh, the number of people employed by mining in Goa was 8,302. The sixth economic census, remember this is a census, so every establishment in the state has been counted, shows mining employment at 2,657, less than 3,000. Before the mining ban and after the mining ban, the increase in unemployment was about 8,000 people. And if you look at all the social schemes that the Goa government has instituted since the mining ban, a total of less than 9,000 people are beneficiaries, of which actually nearly 7,000 are owners of trucks and barges, not employees of mining companies or truck drivers or something. These are actually essentially small businessmen. So even the largest number is 9,000. Where is this 100,000 and 300,000? Sure, there are other people who are providing maybe, you know, garage services or maintenance services or bars and restaurants. But that seems to be a vast overestimate. Now let's move on. Uh, and let's look at a related segment of the population, the mining affected. These are the people who uh, find that uh, mining really destroys their life in many ways. If you just add the population of the mining talukas itself, that's nearly 350,000 people. Well over you know, the 8-9 thousand people who are actually benefiting from mining. So then you could argue that you know, maybe the state government's finances are dependent on mining. And this also turns out not to be very true. 
we saw that over a ten, eight year period the state government got 2400 crores out of total revenues of 27,000 crores about 10% of its revenues but if you actually look year on year for most of this period the state government got less than 50 crores in their budget just remember that right now our budget is 10,000 crores less than 50 crores is you know irrelevant frankly only in three years did the state government get more than 100 crores and that was because the royalty rates for INO were changed at the insistence of the Odisha government and the centre fell in line with what the Odisha government required and the amounts increased to 300 crores and two years of 900 crores of royalty. And after the mining ban this has stopped and uh, the government doesn't seem to be any real financial distress. The budgets are already in balance with pretty much no revenue from, the, from mining. And uh, as we've seen before, actually the amounts being received from mining are pretty small and not as consequential or earth shattering as the government makes it out to be. So then uh, if that's also not so important, then let's look at uh, the overall economy. You know, maybe mining is the backbone of the economy and if mining stops, everything will collapse. That also is untrue. Over, since 2000, mining has not exceeded 7.5% of GDP at constant prices. 7.5% less than 10%. For instance, construction is approximately 20% of Goa's GDP. Manufacturing is nearly 50% of Goa's GDP. So, I mean, would it be logical to say that construction is also the backbone of Goa's economy? Is manufacturing also the backbone of Goa's economy? Tourism is unfortunately not split up, but most likely is larger than that also, larger than mining. So, can we have multiple backbones of Goa's economy? It frankly doesn't make sense. Goan economy is no longer dependent on mining. When mining started, it was very manual and huge numbers of people were employed. But today mining is highly mechanized and increasingly very, very few people are actually employed in mining. And this is actually a global situation. Even in India, since 1950s, the total employment in mining has steadily reduced while the total production has multiplied. So mining is not so critical. So let's look at in this context, what are the proposals that the Goenci Mati movement is making? Well, let's go back to what should be the level of mining from the perspective of future generations. There are two perspectives Goa Foundation and the Goenci Mati movement is taking. The first is we are, make, we are saying that the mineral should be available for at least seven generations. Now, uh, so it's, it's a long enough period, it cannot be exhausted in one generation or in 10 years like was being done. Now, 7 generations works out to 210 years, 30 years a generation into 7, 210 years. So just for simplicity, we are recommending that the mineral should last for at least 200 years. So 1 by 200th of the mineral reserves can be extracted in each year. This would ensure that the mineral lasts 200 years, available for seven generations. At current known reserves, this works out to somewhere between 5 and 6 million tons of extraction a year. As reserves are proven, this limit would obviously increase because it's just 1 by 200 of the reserves. The second cap on environmental grounds is being recommended to be set at an initial level of 12 million tons a year. This was the level at which uh, it was recorded all the way back in 1985 that the window pane oysters in our rivers had nearly become extinct because of the amount of mining dust that was blowing into the rivers. Now this 12 million ton cap would also be a flexible cap. The system would run at 12 million tons and all environment parameters, whether it is noise, dust, uh, damage to fields, cousins, to the rivers, all of these would be monitored. If all these parameters are within limit, then the mining cap would be slowly increased with time because there is no substantial environmental damage or social damage. However, 
if any mining if any environmental damage is observed for instance pollution exceeds the limits at on the roads then the mining cap would be abruptly and sharply dropped and then slowly increased this really is in line with the precautionary principle which says you know uh take make sure that you don't cause extensive you know irreparable damage and mining over you know reducing the amount of mining is really no loss because what are we losing the mineral is going nowhere we can extract it tomorrow if we don't extract it today employment is also no loss because i mean whenever we extract it the employment will be there uh some people say there's loss of foreign exchange again there is no loss because we haven't sold our mineral if we don't sell it today we'll sell it tomorrow the money is still there the value is still there so there's no fundamental loss so if we take this as a starting position then automatically the next point is that we don't have to do mining in 80 or 100 mines all across the state and damage the whole state we can do mining in one or two mines which are slightly larger 6 million tons can be done in two mines of 3 million tons each even today there are mines which extract almost that amount but the advantage of concentrating mining in one or two mines is that we can manage the environment and all its impacts very closely we can in fact create a little stadium seating and the entire population of goa can come and monitor it, monitor their mining illegal mining will reduce environment damage will reduce and uh, we would have a much better control system uh but okay so how do we get to this point but well, obviously the first thing we have to do is to get back to our clean slate we are losing enormous amounts of money from the renewed leases and the first thing that any new government must do is cancel every single mining lease where legally possible and we've seen uh, all over the country there are many laws and which are almost always uh, most entities are breaching laws all the time and this should not be too difficult uh, to do once the leases are cancelled we can then uh, the government can then proceed to recover the 65000 crores that is still due and we can restructure the mining and get down to this one or two mining leases at the 6 million ton cap now to have one or two mining new mining leases will take a little bit of time because fresh mining plans would be required fresh fresh environment clearances would require would be required so this would take at least a two, two to three year period to put in place what happens in between well we have a few plans that also and the first thing is part of the supreme court judgment was that 15 million tons of ready iron ore uh ready to export would be part of the goa's uh, government's property and should be sold to e auction half has already been sold about 1000 crores has come in uh just by comparison less than 300 crores has been paid out to mining dependent through all the various subsidies but 1000 crores has come in so far half is still available and hopefully another 1000 crores could come in we are recommending that we take that money and use it to build uh, the national highway 17 uh, bypass through from mapusa through bicholi uzgaon dharbandora savorde kp all the way to balli now this is a few advantages first it takes all the heavy traffic out of the coastal routes making tourism a little bit easier for the uh, making the roads less congested for the tourism and local population traffic by constructing this road it's basically a huge earth moving job and a lot of employment would be created for the truck owners and the truck drivers and uh, so on once the road was actually built then what you would find is with the traffic coming in a whole bunch of new enterprises would spring up along the road and that would lead to a revival of the economy in the mining areas our second proposition is uh, would take quite a few more years there are over 750 million tons of dumps littered across the state of goa just by comparison the peak extraction was only 50 million tons so this is the equivalent of 15 years of mineral exports lying in dumps now it's been estimated that 20% or about 150 million tons are actually sellable so our proposal is simple 
let's sell this 150 million tons even at the current limit of 20 million tons that would take eight years to dispose of take this money from the 150 million tons that are sellable and if there's anything else sellable sell that also but of the take the remaining 600 million tons of dumps and use that to restore abandoned mines and pits there are abandoned mines all over goa and especially some will never reopen mines which are now in national national parks or wildlife sanctuaries will never reopen but still need to be restored so take the money from the dumps take the remaining dumps use the trucks or available and restore these abandoned mines and quarries that are scar on goa you will get rid of the dump problem you will get rid of the mine pit problem and you've created employment and this gives you these two propositions gives us as a state about 10 years before fresh mining would be required that gives us a lot of time to put new principles and policies in place it gives the government a lot of time to recover the 65000 crores and uh, we would have breathing time for the environment in the mining areas also to recover because there's no fresh mining the dumps are being uh, you know taken down the mining pits are being restored and uh, to support all of this we are also recommending the the, input, uh, the <clears throat> introduction of a state of an art, state of the art control system taking best practices from across the planet as well as radical transparency these minerals belong to all of us we must know what's happening with them and we must have the right to actually go in and check at any point in time what's going on so we are in addition to all of these we are asking for state of the art control system radical transparency and a reward for whistleblowers as well as protection for them so this if you think about it is a very logical system because we're making sure that the mining dependent do not suffer by reducing the volume of mining the mining impact and the mining affected will also not suffer we are putting all the money into a permanent fund and that's really going to be uh, you know there for future goa will be will really become almost like a first world country we would be leading the way within india and actually across the planet and uh, the people would benefit the future generations would benefit Yes, a few miners would uh, no longer control the state, but surely that's a good thing. So this, in short, is a proposition. Please go on to our website, goenchimati.org slash manifesto. It's already available in English, in Konkani, Romi and Devnagari, Marathi and Hindi. We'll soon have Urdu and Kannad also and if other if people are willing to translate into more languages we will uh, you know put those up as well but more importantly please tell all your friends family colleagues people you meet in a bus your podar ramponkar everybody needs to know we all own the minerals we all have a stake in it and our children are going to ask us the hard question what were we doing